Your tires in the rain first day out? All season tires? Summer tires? Drive safe. On the speaking of drive safe, another way that this stream's been slow recently. Hour and a half into the stream. Haven't had a single resub. It's two days in a row that this has happened. See you later, pilot. Fly safe. I mean, drive safe. I mean, for Gremlin to be number one, you'd have to do some work, man. Like, that's a lot of messages you'd have to spam. Which would probably just get you globally banned, because if you just repeatedly spam the same message or something, it does get you globally banned. Did I miss something? Verona, what are we on about? Anyway, enough yawning from streamer. Let's play some dwarves. All right, so my crappy night's sleep and shitty morning aside, let's dive into some dwarves. Um, so this is the Plank of Nations, the uh, good biome on the good mountain with like the tower that we're building. Population is set to maximum, um, and uh, there's a Gorlack. Um, we have 152 dwarves in this fortress. Frame rates are fine. Uh, the fortress itself is kind of a big box with a weird shape in the middle. And it's got a bigger box on the outside. We're currently filling in the ceiling up here so that we can have, like, tall roofs in here and then maybe make this layer into an umbrella. I haven't decided yet. Is that blood or wine? I really hope that's wine. That's beer. Okay, that's fine. Um... We've got our military work in here, and we're slowly moving them over to adamantine weapons because down in the basement, we're digging out adamantine. Um, it is cold here in the winter, which is why there's a bunch of like light blue stuff in the bottom left. That's ice. Um, but it goes all the way up to here, and then uh, I want to work on this roof, which is going to go up still. Around the edge, uh, we just have a pretty standard-ass trap hall. Like, that's all That's all traps right there. That's, that's, all, that's all that that is, is traps. So we're building a trap hall. Down here is our prison, as well as our uh, coffins. Um, down here is like the bottom half of our well. The actual down area goes down to here, and this is where our bedrooms are. Still don't have enough beds for all dwarves, but we're working on it. We've got um, a, uh, actually I might put my library in here, in the middle of this, but this up here is a, uh, a nice big, uh, what's the word? A guild hall for the dwarves. Uh, so I might put a library down at the bottom. I haven't decided yet. But anyway, if we go further down, a little bit further down, uh, down here is where uh, we put all of the bones and refuse and stuff, which then gets thrown into lava down that hole in the center there. Um, down here is kind of where the first uh, lava pit is. And there's actually a second one up here, which I only just learned about um, because these caverns are so large. Um, that's the upper, that's our metal storage for ore and bars. Down here is our glass manufacturing area, our, uh, uh, metal smithing area, and more metal smithing, um, as well as the metal smithing guild, which is currently full of boulders still, but we'll work on that. These are the lava reservoirs. If we go a little further down, I was kind of hoping that spiders would get in here. I might need to, like, fortify some stuff to, like, let spiders in, um, because I want to make that into, like, a cobweb field. Um, if I go further down... All the way down, all the way down. We go down to here where we've mined out a bunch of um, adamantine. Um, but we haven't gone much deeper than that. We just kind of went up and then we didn't go down. So I'm going to see if there's any more up here because it might actually go up higher. But um, we're going to be kind of poking around and chipping away at adamantine to fill out these two squads, or three squads rather, uh, with adamantine weapons. And uh, yeah, the, the most notable event in this fortress to happen was um, our captain of the guard here, wherever they are. Do, 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 do. Uh, where is the captain of the guard? Captain of the guard. There is the captain of the guard. Tekid um, has a very, very, very fancy weapon. Um, actually, apparently you've got a silver battle axe. 
I guess I have to force equip it again. Anyway, I, I, I gave, unless, actually, no, wait, never mind. That's not the person I thought it was. Where's my captain of the guard? Not militia captain. Captain of the guard, where are you? Um. Oh. They are no longer captain of the guard. All right, well, I had a captain of the guard. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Then, then who the heck is in that squad? May, may, actually, maybe they got removed from that. Hmm. Anyway, I'm not sure what happened to my captain of the guard, but I have a um, an adamantine mace which I gave to my captain of the guard. Anyway, uh, the named dwarves in the uh, fortress are Sonderbar, um, Mirhill Clay, uh, Rolf, Farana, Redger, Stone, Snail, Mapetti, Arius Gamer, Frog for Hire, Thalfon, uh, Harum Harums, wait, what? Hops, Cutest Ghost, Diamond, uh, Magna, B-Lug, DJ Huxley, Raz, and I think that's everybody. Oh, yeah, it's a pretty good little fort. Russ Ames, it's been a minute. Yeah, I'm pretty shit today, but getting by. But uh, working on some big constructions for this fortress. There's a Crundle fighting with a Forgotten Beast. I'm not even sure which Forgotten Beast that is. There's several Forgotten Beasts in the basement, and I can't even see it from here. Uh, currently, we are actually at war um, with the Occult Seduction, which is a goblin civilization. Well, that's fun. But we're trading with a bunch of other people, so that's good. We have also only just started farming. When you're first learning about it, Forgotten Beasts are nasty. Yeah, and then, like, if you know how to just ignore them, you can pretty effectively just ignore them. They're only nasty for the initial portion of learning the game. All right, how many conglomerate blocks do I have? Lots. Cool. Yeah, I have seven, and they're all named Friend, and they're locked in the basement. Yeah. No, all, all of my for Forgotten Beasts are... I, I like my Forgotten Beasts the way I like my prisoners tied up and locked in the basement. All right. Uh, okay, fine. I use them to kill goblins. Yeah, pretty much. They deal with my problems for me. Forgotten Beasts? Oh, you mean problem solvers. This one makes me silk. You're stealing their Wi-Fi. There is a big stone wall between me and the Wi-Fi access point. So wait, why are you stealing your neighbor's Wi-Fi? Also, I mean, the the way I the way I see it with Wi-Fi is if their Wi-Fi is easy enough to get on that someone can just use it. That's the neighbor's fault, not yours. Like if the if the network name is D-Link and the password is admin then like your neighbor fucked up that's that's not your fault that's your neighbor who's fucked up anyway how have you been Russ Ames what brings you by today oh you're on holiday still I, I don't think that's, like, an excuse or a reason to steal someone's Wi-Fi, but... There you go. That's why you're borrowing your neighbor's Wi-Fi. I see, I see, I see. When I um was setting up the play date last night, I had to go look up what my password was because I couldn't remember what my uh, Wi-Fi password was. True story. Yeah, that's the thing, is generally you don't want free Wi-Fi to connect to you. Read that fine print. It's like, oh, it's only going to track you for the rest of the day. 
It's going to know exactly where you've been. It's like Santa Claus, but uh, for surprise advertising. Uh, I'm still on. I just stream Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, right? Like, I've, um, I've changed my schedule, so I don't stream, like, Saturday, Sunday, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday anymore. I just stream Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Free Wi-Fi is a trap. I will say my ISP doesn't have free Wi-Fi, but if you are if you buy internet from my ISP, then they have Wi-Fi hotspots everywhere that are free to use with your subscription. So it's either like pay by the hour if you're just in town and need Wi-Fi, or it's included. So when it comes to Wi-Fi, there's actually like most public parks have Wi-Fi here. <laughs> um, and it's all like ISP run. So both TELUS and Shaw do that. I'm with Shaw, but TELUS has almost as many. It's like kind of a pretty normal thing here. But that's partially because like cell service is so expensive and pretty much a scam here. If cell service was affordable, then we wouldn't run into that as much. Because people would be like, well, cell service is affordable, so I'll just use data. It's like, well, no, data's fuck off expensive. So like, it's better to connect to the free Wi-Fi. Also, the Odd Realm developer has been on a tirade on Twitter. Well, not a tirade, but like he's been tweeting out reviews on Twitter. And I find this very funny. We got a review on the 1st of August that just says good. And then a review on the 2nd of August that says not good. <laughs> I don't, I shouldn't find this funny, but this is really funny. <laughs> Re two reviews of Odd Realm back to back, good and not good. True, yes. <laughs> False. Fact. Although I, I will always r remember the dumbest Steam review I ever saw, um, which was for the game Parkitect. And it was shortly after the game left Early Access, right? And the review was, the view had like 0 0.1 hours. And the review literally, like the minimum amount of time to re review it. And it says, oh yeah, at an airport, absolutely use a VPN. Sheesh. Um, and the, the review literally was, the graphics are awful. That was the review. The graphics are awful. It's like, did you look at the screenshots beforehand and just get so mad that you're like, I must leave this game a negative review. Like, how how does somebody do... Like, that is the least Steam review Steam review. It's just like um, that one person that I kind of gave a hard time that one time because they were like, yeah, I bought Cud today and played it for five minutes and realized I didn't have time to learn it, so I left it a negative review. It's like, what? <laughs> They're like, yeah, I, I bought Cud today Play, messed around with it for five minutes, decided I didn't have time to learn it, so I left it a negative review. But, <laughs> and then, like, I, I read the review, and it was literally just like, yeah, this game seems like it could be really cool, but it also seems like it's going to take a really long time to learn, and I don't have so much time these days, uh, so I wouldn't recommend it. Most perplexing negative review I've ever seen. Explore, explainer, neighbor is family, but is rude to just, but is rude to just sit there at the house with good Wi-Fi connection. So just sitting in the house next to it, but on against the stone wall makes it hard for you to get Wi-Fi. 
It's gonna get you back to it. They got fibers. Okay, I mean, fair, fair enough. So what you're saying is, it's a crime. It's just a victimless crime, Diamond. So I, I respect that. I'm all for victimless crimes. There's a baby alpaca running around. And you get a whole bunch of migrants in a short period of time, and then suddenly there's random animals. It's like, where did you come from? There's that horse. We're removing the horse, too. If anybody would like a dwarf, I do have plenty of dwarves if you'd like me to name a dwarf for you. That dwarf's becoming strand extractors. That's how you know things are going well. Also, be like you're still the mayor, by the way. So another thing has happened. The kind of goal for this fortress is the queen of this faction used to be kind of this strange gelder, right? Um, and we, after a, like a little bit of deliberations, kind of decided the goal for this fort was to try and attract the queen to the fort and then kill them. Well, I have a problem. It's now Elamino, which is one of my previous dwarves. So... <laughs> The first fort I did with this faction had both Wilmer and Elamino in it. And I'm pretty sure they were both part of the starting seven. Anywho, they're both now various high ups in this faction. Um, so I'm no longer trying to kill them, but I'm still trying to get the queen. Uh, cook or brewer? I... Okay. Uh, how about a cook who's currently preparing a lavish meal? Stukos. Hey, lady. Within the last season, she was uneasy after being unable to pray to Lamouche for too long. She felt satisfied after getting into an argument, and she was interested after watching a performance and felt satisfied at work, and was interested after watching a performance and felt satisfied at work. She's 58 years old, born on the 28th of Hematite in the year 163. Her hair is somewhat greasy and her very long hair is braided. She has a broad chin and her nose bridge is convex. Her small lobed ears are somewhat narrow. Her slightly low eyebrows are quite sparse. Her slightly sunken brass eyes are slightly close set and her hair is pale taupe and her skin is cinnamon. She likes uh, chromite? I'm not even sure what that is. Fine pewter, a heliod... Uh, Heliodor and cockatiel leather and coral and giant porcupine bone. Fun fact, the only way to get coral is from forgotten beasts that happen to be made of coral. Uh, gigantic tortoise shell in the color chocolate. Scepters and gray parrots for their intelligence. And the sound of the Carillion silkiness and when possible prefers to consume gazelle and bilberry wine. Um, and can't stand worms. Strange things to dislike. She personally sees guile and cunning as indirect and somewhat worthless, and sees perseverance in the face of adversity as bullheaded and foolish. Sees working hard as a foolish waste of time, and dreams of crafting a masterwork someday, and this dream was realized. She doesn't mind a little tumult and discord in day-to-day -day living, and she's assertive and tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects. She is slow to trust others and can handle stress, and does not often feel lustful and she occasionally overindulges, and she has a tendency towards forming deep and emotional bonds with others. She needs alcohol to get through the working day, and is somewhat focused with satisfied needs. There you go. Welcome to the fort, Taylor. Yeah, we're going to keep filling this in. Now we're going to start working on this roof. This roof is going to take a while. I guess I could also just like quietly do this. That should be a wall piece. But yeah, I don't know. Weird times. Weird times. So I'm sorry if I seem uptight and stressed today, but I'm doing my damnedest here, and the crappy night's sleep is not going to help, so I will do my best.
But yeah, we are currently extracting a lot of metal strands, which is vastly increasing the value of my base. So that's cool. Working on those, uh, uh-oh. B-Lug is mandated construction of grates. Okay. Uh, rock, great. Sure we can make that happen. B-Lug's a very great, grady mayor. I don't even know what that means. Um, the other thing that we're doing is we're paving um, this back area back here. So we're going to be filling all of this in with uh, the conglomerate blocks that we have, the brown stuff. Not the prettiest stuff in the world, but it'll do just fine. I mean, there are I haven't seen a single gremlin in this fort, so I don't know why you keep saying that at this point. You've said it twice in five minutes, Diamond. If you have anything to add to the conversation, that would actually be appreciated. In fact, I would love it if you could do that instead of just you know, gremlining for mayor. And as always, if anybody has any questions for uh, about like about the fort or what we're doing or the goals, I don't know. Feel free to yell at me. I'll do my best to answer. Another place we have bedrooms is back here. This is kind of like the original bedrooms that we built. I would probably say that they're the nicest bedrooms, but because they're the most consistently furnished, the ones down in the basement aren't so consistently furnished, but also not terrible. And uh, they do have brass furnishings where they do have furnish furnishings, which is quite nice. Thinking about making... Um, yeah, we're making a whole bunch of brass chests. Which currently, we don't have any, but we started working on them. Is that yellow border between the cyan and the brown? Uh, the game is saving. It's probably um, an ore vein that got smoothed. I mean, if you're talking about up on the surface, um, probably... Probably an ore vein that got smoothed, but I, I literally can't move the camera right now because the game is saving. So. But yeah, it's probably an ore vein that didn't get mined out. Or a different type of rock. Actually, it's probably engraved conglomerate. <laughs> because conglomerate, when it's engraved, turns yellow. Yeah, it's probably engraved conglomerate. I'm like almost certain. Like 99% certain it's engraved in conglomerate. All right, there we go. Let's uh, jump up to the surface and I'll see. So if you were talking about this, it's engraved conglomerate. If you're talking about this, they're statues. If I go down one, and over here, this is uh, citrine clusters, which are gems, and then these are engraved conglomerate. So yeah, it's, an, it's an engraved conglomerate. And then these are gardens. This is where we're growing our uh, foodstuffs and also um, pigtails for clothing. Because clothing has been a bit of a struggle in this fort to get rolling. Yeah, the yellow tiles. Yeah, those are those are engraved conglomerate or engraved gemstones. Just like these. These are all engraved gemstones. Or engraved conglomerate. Or engraved coal, if it's the, the gray ones down here. These can all be, you know, examined as well. But looks like we are working on... Uh, turning pigtails into thread. Did I just... Did you guys hear a pop sound? I swear I just heard a pop sound. Where did that come from? What the fuck was that? Anyway, not like an audio pop, but like a very digital... Pop sound. Like a bubble going off. Very strange. Like a sound effect, not like a... Anything else? Anyway, they're moving seeds over to the seed stockpile, and then those are going to go over there and get planted. Nope. Okay, I guess I'm I'm hallucinating then. Lovely. 
That's always a good sign. <laughs> Alright, well, all those seeds are getting put into the seed stockpile, which is a good thing. Because I apparently have a lot of pigtails that needed to get turned into thread. And then that stuff can all get made into cloth. And then from there, you know, we can do more of that. So all of this over here is going to continue getting work done as quickly as possible. Also, for the game that we were playing last night, Space Bandit, apparently um, I only had one more boss to beat, so we're going to try and finish that tonight, if possible. Also, apparently, Last Call BBS is now out of early access on Steam. For those of you who like Zaktronics games. So that's the thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a scary sentence. Update one, new model kit and 12,000 new puzzles. I mean, it's their variations for Dungeons and Diagrams, which is one of the game, which is the, one of the games in here, but for this one, it's crazy. Will it really be the last Zack game? I don't know. It's either, it's either that or really clever marketing. I think it'll be the last game made under the Zaktronics brand. Will it be the last game those people make? I don't know. I mean, there's like five people that work at Zaktronics, right? So I don't know. I'm not the biggest Zaktronics person. I mean, I really like their solitaire cologne. <laughs> um, but for like, or rather, I really like their solitaire variant. Um, but as for like, you know, the Opus Magnum and like the more in-depth stuff. That stuff's always just been way too far over my head. Like it's one of those types of games where I've always just kind of respected them from a distance. I don't know. I mean, it's sort of like, oh man, Vlambeer just being done after they finished Nuclear Throne, right? You know, like, have they released other games uh, as Vlambeer? Yes, they released one, and they've released games separately. Will they ever release Gigabugs or whatever that, Galactic Megabugs or whatever that Bugs game thing that they were working on, which is basically just like fancy Galaga? I, I don't know, maybe one day. Will probably be different, but still very neat. Yeah, totally. I, I mean, I know that the studio founder of Zaktronics has somewhat left games. Like he works as a, I think a university teacher or a high school teacher. He's, he's working as a teacher now and has been for the past like year, um, which is part of the reason why Zaktronics is shutting down. Maybe they'll get a burning need to make another game. Maybe they won't. I, mean, I, does, I don't think it really matters. I mean, I, I think that it's it's a niche, and if that niche needs to be filled, someone else will go do it. But those games never sold particularly well, and their last few games were financial disasters. So, I mean, even Last Call BBS, like, isn't selling particularly well. I mean, it's on Game Pass, but, like, outside of being on Game Pass, it's not doing great. So we gotta wait for them to make more rock blocks. We're still making brass chests. Checking in with my mayor. Still dreams of bathing the world in chaos. I really wonder how you achieve that goal of bathing the world in, like, how do you bathe the world in chaos and have that dream be realized? <laughs> I wonder. 
I don't actually know how to realize that dream. Create a masterwork? I know. Mastering a skill? I know. Raising a family? I know how to do that. Bathing the world in chaos? Ruling the world, I think they just need to become a king. Attaining a rank in society, they need to become like a mayor. I don't know how to succeed. Do I have to repeat what I said a minute ago, Diamond? This also isn't long death, so like that meme doesn't even apply. Forging adamantine swords. Let's go. Yeah, you can only generate, it's like a thousand in an X amount of time. But the when it comes to Steam Keys, there is like a point with them where you're allowed to generate more if you get an approximate number of sales. So if you, uh, I, I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but if you've sold enough copies of your game, you can generate a lot more. The no, the problem with selling the 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 game on their through a key on their site is a lot of them sell it at a discount on their site or slightly cheaper. And the problem with selling it like that is someone can also just take the key and then resell it. Or like let's just say, let's just say, right? Cuz you can buy Factorio from their website via key, right? Let's just say somebody bought 50 keys a couple months ago uh before the price went up. They can now go on to any key reselling website and sell it at a profit for less than on Steam, taking away Steam sales and making a profit. So there, it's not always a positive thing. Like you don't always want to sell your game via your website. It's not always a beneficial thing. Yeah, also if you're selling it through your site and you support regional pricing, then someone could just swap their VPN out for, I don't know, um, Argentina and buy it at a much lower price and then turn around and resell it. So yeah, no, it's, it's not a positive thing necessarily and not as helpful. It's more for as a benefit to the audience, not as a benefit to the developer. Something like itch.io where they take a much smaller cuts way better. Anyway, um, Mathman that cat was seen being stolen. All right. Who saw it being stolen? We've had a lot of thefts here. I only have three guests currently. Doesn't seem to be any of them. So it's gotta be one of my dwarves that stole it. Is anybody reporting? Oh, shit, right. I don't have a... Okay. Um, I'm going to set the captain of the guard as B-Lug temporarily. Because I don't really want... A captain of the guard who's too strong. There we go. They're all reporting crime. Looking to see if I see... Okay. The artifact's being passed to the thief. Pause. Question is, who did it? Wow. Wow. So it's, it seems like it's Selob the Butcher. Where are you? Who are you passing it to? Oh, wow. All the way down here. Everybody's reporting the crime. Holy shit, that's a lot of crimes being reported. They're all just running into the mayor's office to report the crime. Question is, who has it then right now? Q 
human farmer. Now, is that one of mine? Don't think that they're on my map anymore. Yeah, they've already left. Wow. Twenty nine days in prison for theft. Huh. I'm a good citizen, I swear. I mean, allegedly, one could say. There's still more reports coming in. You know, let's interview you. I really like to know why you did it, if possible. But Mayor is going to go chain him up real quick. Well, that's sad that we didn't get the opportunity to uh, find out what caused it. Also, for a um, an elf that dreams of bringing chaos to the world, it makes sense that the elf would also be the captain of the guard. Also, Diamond, you should um, Photoshop up when you have a computer, because I think that you're not on a computer, but when you have a computer, you should Photoshop an image of the mayor gremlin. You should make that into a better Twitch TV emote, so you can just post that instead of saying gremlin for mayor. Well, that sucks. I lost another artifact. But we were able to get the interrogation done. Subject confessed to theft. Uh, in the early autumn of 221, Ivac plank, plank rings corrupted it, the subject in order to have an agent in Threat Dweller. Ivac threat plank rings corrupted the su uh, corrupted the subject. Uh, plank rings was, was met with flattering remarks, and the subject trusted Ivac plank rings and agreed despite valuing the law. And they plotted to steal bent mansions under the influence of Ivac. Ivec, eh? Ivec. The question is, where did you go, Ivec? And will you come back? That's the bigger question. Must have been like at the edge of the map when that was ready to happen because god they disappeared quickly that or they just went stealth or something but you'd think that the traps would have caught them oh well that's a bloody shame that APP for Ivec I don't even know what faction they were part of so makes that kind of difficult Feels guilty after being confined. Well, looking to see if they were f considered friends with this person or like passing acquaintances. Yeah, I don't see any farmers in their friends. Hmm. Also, chat room, as I will always remind you, if you want to help the channel out for absolutely no cost to you, Retweets on social is very helpful. Posting the stream on social is very helpful. Um, going over to your channel and typing in slash host, B-L-I-N-D-I-R-L, is also very helpful. Just because, you know, it's been a little bit quiet financially today. That is some ways that you could help directly. Just saying. All right, so we are smoothing up some walls to make for nicer prison cells. At least I made your prison cell as nice as possible. Well, we're going to go down here. And we're going to... Are they literally... Okay. Did they run out of brass? 
Yeah, it kind of looks like they've run out of brass. All right. Um, just set them to make brass for a bit. But I'm also wondering if that human that stole the artifact was one of the Void Hunters. I guess if uh, any more zombies come to visit, we have to interrogate them immediately. <laughs> it's going to be how we're going to have to do this. It must be set up by a real thief. What do you mean? Do their accounts match? What do you mean by accounts, Nuclear Sneeze? Hi, a beer manier. How's things? Thanks for the host, Rolf. Forgotten Beast is beating the crap out of a crundle. Also, uh, in regards to social stuff, there's a link to the tweet that I posted when I went live today. Very helpful to get retweets and likes and all that kind of jazz. There's also a picture of the Playdate in the Playdate's box. Which the uh, Playdate ac account liked that tweet, which isn't a major thing or anything, but I don't know. It's kind of neat when like big brand accounts like that like tweets. It's like, oh, hey, they actually look at their Twitter. That's cool. But what you been up to, Bearmanir? Still working on that table? Not super fond of how this room looks. Gotta make it better. It's exactly 16. How fitting. Mm. But yeah, no, I, I quite like having a fort like this where there's active things like people showing up to steal my stuff. <laughs> there's something about it that's just kind of fun. I don't know. I, I quite like it. It's one of my favorite things in Dwarf Fort. Oh, shit. We've got a bookbinder. Logan, who's been taken by a fey mood, was hanging out in the temple. Running water is such a luxury. You know, I, I was um, listening to a podcast recently where they were, like, just kind of looking back at uh, their childhood for various reasons. And one of the things that they were talking about was how, like, neither of their grandparents had running water. And they could remember, it's like, yeah, I remember when my grandfather was talking about putting plumbing into his house. It's like, man, imagine how much, it's, it's amazing how much the world changes in two generations. Anyway, so Logan, this bookbinder, has claimed a magma forge, grabs a brass bar. Okay, so we've already started off with brass bars. Runs over here, grabs a, a, a lapis lazuli from the looks of things. Runs back down. Drops that off. Grabs another gem. Or rather, I think that's actually uh, unfinished glass. Raw glass? Raw green glass? You remember when they put the public water and sewer in, the outhouse was retired? No more spiders? <laughs> yeah, I, um... Wait, public water and sewer in? I don't know what that means. I remember when we got our well changed and, and um, when we got our hot water heater, well, not hot water heater, but we got a hot water heater put in so we didn't have to boil water. That was nice. There was a weird period of time there where we, where we had like very limited hot water, but so we had a very small hot water heater. And then for a while there, we had no hot water. We had no hot water for like a couple months. That's like the closest to that that I have in my memory. I guess that I guess like getting like the water hooked up, like eighty to a hundred years ago, it would be like getting high speed internet hooked up <laughs> for my generation. <laughs> it's like I I remember when we got high speed internet hooked up, and that was a big novelty and a massive deal.
Where are you headed? Where in the world are you headed? Dwarf's going places. I... Oh. Okay, of all of the places you could acquire one lock. <laughs> that's, uh... I guess a place you could go. There's many stockpiles with logs in them that are closer. But that was the right log, I guess. That was the one log that this dwarf demands that they decided that they wanted. I saw a post on the DF subreddit a couple days ago talking about how they really wanted the option in Dwarf Fortress to take direct control over a citizen um, to move them out of danger. And it made me a little sad when I saw that because I was just like, wow, that that's that's completely negating like the beauty of Dwarf Fortress. The like dwarves just kind of having their own personality i guess and just like being able to stand in danger if they wanted just like you know children like have no concept of danger in door fortress so they can just like walk in front of an enemy army and just start playing <laughs> um, and there, there's something about that that's just kind of beautiful and this person is just asking for that and i was very happy to see literally every single comment in that entire thread was like ah you play rim world <laughs> that's not the point of dwarf fort so we got rope breed cloth, we've got cow leather, wagon wood logs. Ooh, that's actually kind of cool. Um, phallite blocks, two pieces of raw green glass, brass bars, and rough lapis lazulis. Any bets on what this dwarf makes, chat? It's a book binder on a magma forge. And before we get like a brass longsword. I feel like that wouldn't be very effective. I feel that would just snap, would it not? Brass isn't very strong in that way. Aw, oh, Diamond, you invested a little bit and you got a little win. Congrats. Where's my big boy investments? Come on, man. You lost your sense of style? No longer investing 200000 per? Let's do all these. You almost managed to catch that rock that lives in one of your fortresses. Oh, really? Is it flying around on the surface? You know you can cage trap those, right? Like, just have an open door to your fort with a cage trap in it, and it'll go thunk, get caught in the cage trap, and then you winsies. So they're pretty easy to catch. And one of my strand extractors has given birth to a baby girl, which is very adorable. Actually curious, how much adamantine am I sitting on right now? Just one adamantine wafer? Okay. It's probably why that dwarf didn't use it as part of their artifact. Pray to the wicked coasts. Is that a force? Wicked coasts. The tax of luxuries, I guess you tax luxuries, is a deity of the Book of Conjurers, the other, one of the other dwarven factions. The tax most often takes the form of a male dwarf and is associated with wealth. They, they have a god of taxes, chat. <laughs> um, they also wor worship uh, Istreth Chaos Dents. This is one of the... Um, this is a dwarf that came in as part of, part of a poetry group. The Book of Conjurers most often takes the form of a female dwarf and is associated with victory war and fortresses. Seems to like cursing night creatures. You know, possum-like monster, a night creature... Uh, were creature, two were creatures and two night creatures. Um, you found it's harder when they're a current resident. No way to aggro the fort. 
did you like settle on its lair? But yeah, there's a way. There's ways to aggro them into your fort. Throw dwarves at it. <sighs> the Wicked Coasts uh, is a deity of the Book of Conjurers. The Wicked Coasts most often takes the form of a female dwarf and is associated with water, murder, and death. Chat, what's the connection between water, murder, and death? Because, like, doesn't water give life? <laughs> All right, the next one that they have is uh, the Sizzling. The boast, Gold Cobalt, the Sizzling, is a deity of the Book of Conjurers. Most often takes the form of a male dwarf that is associated with fire and metals. I like that deity. And Erib, Coal Cobalt, the Avalanche of Brightness, is a deity of the Book of Conjurers. Takes the form of a male dwarf and is associated with gems, jewels. Oh, right, yeah, I saw that Pirates of the Caribbean movie where the where they flip the boat over and then they're in hell or heaven or whatever that place was, purgatory, I don't know. They capsize their 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 boat intentionally and then suddenly they're in pur whatever their purgatory equivalent is. Dorf died then went back to chilling. Does it is is it staying in like a cave? Cuz if so just go build the Trap at the entrance to the cave. I mean, fishing is like the equivalent of dwarven suicide. So, yeah, I guess I could see that. So something I'm kind of thinking about doing with up here is filling this up with windmills. Oh, wow, that's pretty badass. I already have a use for it. Logum, the bookbinder, has created Elron Sharul. Not to be confused with Jarul. A, a brass chain and claims it as a family heirloom. It's kind of a rad little chain. I'm a fan. Not to be confused with these chain leggings. It's worth 3,000. The Peaks of Impunity. I feel like that's calling somebody out. This is a brass chain. All crafts dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with oval phthalate cabochons and encircled with bands of cushion green glass cabochons. Wagon wood and cow leather, this object is adorned with hanging rings of lapis lazuli and menaces with spikes of brass and green glass and rope reed. You know, interesting thing about this is it's not made out of our wagon wood. It's made out of the wagon wood of a wagon that exploded on the map. Anyway, we're going to put that in the prison. One of these new cells. Also give all those doors. How's this dwarf doing? Eh, doing really pretty fine. You know, dwarves don't need a lot of tools to do things, but I've always wanted to make the dwarves fishing rods. It would be another thing to actually have wood for, you know? Like that's actually a thing that we that you could logically make for the dwarves pretty easily like thread and wood because I don't know what you guys it's like snail yeah you're right fishing is very close to death the reason I don't fish is it's the one food get mechanism that is often more efficient than just normal farming <laughs> it's like the one thing that which you've trapped the hell out of can you screenshot this I don't believe I've ever seen a rock nest in fortress mode just next time you have the game running, just plop a screenshot into a DF talk because I'm, I'm just I'm curious to see what this thing looks like. All right, so that's now used by justice. Oh, to the lucky prisoner who happens to get the artifact chain. It's like the absolute bliss. 
of just being lucky enough to get the chain. I've also always wondered if they're going to come back. Like, if thieves come back a second time, because I almost never see it. All right, well, let's swap out the dungeon master for something for somebody else. Would you like this job? Means of mastering a skill always tends to be jittery. Doesn't care what others think of her. It's somewhat uncomfortable around those that appear unusual or live differently. Mm. You know what? Sure, Sonderbar, you can be the captain of the guard. We'll give you that gig. The reason I'm going to give it to you is because you don't really care what others think of you. And you seem like you've got a pretty level head on your shoulders. Also not particularly strong. And you do see yourself as fairly important in the grand scheme of things, which would mean that you'll be very happy with the upgraded rank in society. You know, I, I have a cobalt that comes by twice a year in this fort. Needs to be drunk until later. You gonna go get drunk, Rolf? We'll see when we see you. Take care of yourself, dude. Um, where was I going with that? Right. Yeah. No. The the cobalt that visits us annually, Glinkus, hasn't actually made it into the fortress yet. We always spot him on the way in, usually around here, and then he just turns around and runs off. So, we've we have had child snatchers in this fort too, which is it's the first time I've in a while I, since I've seen child snatchers, which is kind of neat actually. Child Snatchers, of course, being the goblin culture of kidnapping. <laughs> the goblins that show up with a big bag and they go for a dwarven child going, I'll take a child, damn it! Um, and they're kind of dangerous. You know, so right now we have this situation, right? TwitchCon is more expensive than it's ever been in the past, right? TwitchCon is more expensive than it's ever been in the past. It's gone up by 20 bucks, all the ticket prices. PAX West still has tickets for sale. For those of you who, like, maybe have never been in the convention circuit for video games, PAX West used to sell out in 15 minutes for the entire weekend. At least for the three-day passes. Like, within a couple of days, they would be sold out entirely. PAX West's tickets have been for sale now for a long time. Like, maybe two months they've been on sale for. And they still have three-day passes for sale. They're more expensive than they were previously, but they still have them. I really wonder... Or I, I'm, I'm really wondering how long this can last... You know, like how long can convent, like, have they scaled down to a point where this is like affordable again? Or are they just going to like hit a roadblock where they all just kind of run out of money? <laughs> I, I really wonder. I haven't looked at Reed Pop's financials, but I do wonder. But yeah, I'm fascinated by this nest beer manure. Fascinated. So, please do post pictures once you have them. It's amazing that there's still ticks available. It's crazy. Also, I need to take a real quick piss break. Be back in two seconds.
also, um, I, I, there, there's something that like I saw last night, Aqua, that stuck in my head in relation to TwitchCon, um, which is Zach Bussey, who's a like Twitch news commentator, basically, um, not doesn't work for Twitch, but uh, it, it basically he he just reports on stuff that Twitch is up to, right? New Twitch features and things like that. Anyway, he uh, basically put out a tweet when Twitch released the uh, uh, lack of guidelines, I suppose, um, for TwitchCon. And basically said, yeah, I'm not going to TwitchCon this year. He's like, it's not worth the risk. He's like, I live in Toronto. It's like, this is, it would be an absolute mess to uh, get into the, um, to, to get to the convention itself already. And like, that'll be made worse by um, just like the organization of this event so far. So he's just like, yeah, I'm not, not going to TwitchCon this year. Literally just like posted that, right? Um, and there was somebody who responded, and I thought that this was a pretty interesting response. And it was from somebody who said, yeah, I live in the city of San Diego, walking distance from the convention center. Please don't come to this city. No, <laughs> none of the restrictions are being followed. There's cases everywhere. Everybody that I know is sick, and it's just kind of a like a nightmare situation right now for us. Please stop coming to my city, and I wish that we could close the convention center. And um, I've heard that sentiment from a couple of people that live in the area. Um, so, you know, there's also that to keep in mind. Got me a pick. Ooh. That's neat. Yeah, I, I've seen these in adventure mode, but I've never seen these in fortress mode. Like a rock's nest. I have a question. Does it lay eggs in there? <laughs> is it a lady rock? Because if it is, and it does. Hmm. <laughs> That's cool. I kind of thought it would be like underground or in a cave. I wonder... Um. If it's not in the nest all the time, build a wall around it and then build a roof on the wall and just like see if you can get it to fly down and in because if it flies down and in, then it will get caught in your traps. That's the way to do that. Oops, nope, I don't want ramps. I just want to dig. That's what I would try and do anyway. If it takes off and flies pretty frequently, I would see if you can... Uh... Actually, I wonder if the reason... Is it marked as hostile or is it marked as visitor? In the unit map. Because there was one time I embarked on a mercenary group's camp. And they weren't marked as hostile. They were marked as visitor until I attacked them. Then they all got marked as hostile. It's marked as resident. Okay, then it's actually like semi-neutral. <laughs> That's interesting. Resident burb. Which you've never seen before? Yeah, it means that you invaded its home. Is what that means. It means you're the bad guys. Well, you know what? Let's just remove this here and start at the other side because I can do this the other way easier. Just want to be friends with it. Uh, it's a giant murder bird of prey. I, I don't think that's going to work. I mean, you don't need to kill it for whatever that's worth. I would uh, just try, I would just recommend building a little house around its nest so that it has nowhere else to go. But if it's a resident, it might also have guaranteed trap avoid, which is why I was saying that that's curious.
Like, there's certain buffs that these... Like, you might want to wiki it and see what that tag actually provides it, because it might know about all your traps. <laughs> so you might not actually be able to catch it. Uh, they can. I mean, you can domesticate rocks, I think. But I think that they might need to be... Because, like, as an example, um, if you capture and tame a giant cave spider and put a hostile animal in front of it, it'll spray webs at it, right? By that, I mean any animal, pretty much. Like a dog, a cat a pig, a goblin, anything that would attack or get attacked by a forgotten cave, or, or forgotten cave spider, giant cave spider, it will spray webs at it, right? And that's how you make silk. However, if you buy a tame cave spider, it will not. Like, there, there is no way to make a tame cave spider shoot webs at a thing. Because it's tame. So, you know, it's just dwarven weirdness. You're going to steal its eggs? I mean, they're not fertile, but I would steal its eggs. I'd steal its eggs and cook them. Yeah, you need a mate, and they would probably fight unless they're both tamed. So, yeah, no, you're not going to get much luck. Not Sorry to just, like, stomp on your dreams of having a pet rock, but, like... Having... Breeding rocks is difficult uh, at the best of times. Also, chat room, since we're extremely lurky this morning, could I get a round of beers? I also just want to state that you only need to cheer 10 cents if you want to get number three on the leaderboard. I've been trying really hard not to do that, but I've been streaming for two and a half hours, and revenue today has been zero, so. Somebody's got to say the obnoxious thing at least once every couple hours. Um, all right, now we sit here and we wait for the miners to come by and mine all this out. Because I need more beds, apparently. Although most dwarves are just socializing. The other thing that I really need to start working on is I need to start working on a pump. I just don't know how to do it exactly, or how I want to do it. Um, thinking about literally just going, like, right here. But, like, maybe a little bit over this way. And I'll cut straight through this, which I'll just, nah. i go this way. There I could go. I'll go right up through the bedrooms. That's fine. I don't know where to put this exactly. What I do know is I need to go from here to the surface. 
Let's maybe go up to the top so I don't cut through the bedrooms. Like if I could go. Up here, maybe? Still gonna go through the bedrooms. So, yeah, I don't know. I need to figure out how I'm gonna do that. Need to figure out how I'm gonna do that. But yeah, anything to keep the chat moving, chat. Because today's been very quiet. Very lonesome <laughs> from the streamer's perspective, so. I don't know, guys. I'm just like ridiculously stressed out right now. Today's bad. I don't like it. And I need more coffee. But yeah, anything to keep the chat moving, anything to draw conversation, not just post more beers, would be very much appreciated right now. Because all I really have to talk about is just uh, the convention circuit going up in virtual flames and me stressing over money and rent. So unless you guys just want to hear me kind of bounce between those two subjects for the next rest of the stream, <laughs> anything else to talk about is appreciated. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Aqua, I don't know. I mean, no. Nugans? Besides, it would probably be doors because there's at least two doors on every car. Actually, at least three doors on every car. So, I don't know. That's not a question that I can answer, so I'd prefer you didn't. I feel like you've been looking at beer dy dynamic headphones as long as I've known you. Do they not come with detachable cables by default? No. I play overhaul mods occasionally. I almost never use mods. Um, do I have any favorites? Eh. Star Wars mods kind of fun. I don't feel like Dwarf Fortress needs mods. <laughs> like, it's one of those games where it's like, there's so much content in the base game that, like, mods just change the flavor. And so it's like, pick your flavor. Do you want dwarfy flavor? Okay, well then play Dwarf Fortress. Do you want Star Wars-y flavor? Okay, play the Star Wars Dwarf Fortress mod. Do you want... I don't know, My Little Pony? Add some pony shenanigans. But no, I mean, the, the last mod I played was May the 4th, and that was the Star Wars mod thing, which just adds, like, Jawas, uh, removes a lot of stuff, and adds a shit ton of robots. Like, 50 bajillion droids are in the game. I mean, I'd rather you tell your whiny tales than I tell my whiny tales on repeat. I mean, what, what's worse? Like, a bunch of people all complaining kind of as a group, or one person complaining about the same thing for 12 hours <laughs> straight? I have inflamed balls like my buddy who might now be missing a planned festival in two weeks. That sounds painful. It 
solidarity complaint. Exactly, Meatloaf. Exactly. People complain that, like, you know, he would do anything for love, but he won't do that. And uh, the rest of us can just say, I would. Solidarity complaining. There you go. It's impossible for me to separate, like, the, the foodstuffs Meatloaf from the band slash singer um, Meatloaf. So whenever I see your username Meatloaf, all I can think of is I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. You got a heat warning for tomorrow? Fun. My air conditioning is actually off right now. It's kind of cool-ish today. Although it's supposed to heat up later this afternoon. It's supposed to go up to 30, but currently it's only about 25 outside. It's actually cloudy right now. So it's tolerable currently. You might have to water your tomatoes a bit more frequently. I've had to water my greens on my patio twice a day the past few days. I haven't watered them yet today. I'll water them tonight. Painful enough to get a doctor's note. I don't even want to know. As somebody who's had to get a set of series of ultrasounds on his te testicles because I had a cancer scare a couple years ago, anything in that general region, I just pity people. Like <laughs> that shit. That shit just sucks, dude. I have a psychiatrist, not the same thing as a therapist. Isn't particularly helpful, but gives some answers. I'm not a big fan of therapy. I realize it's like the cool thing to be a big fan of therapy and like talk about how great therapy is. I don't like therapy. I think therapy's terrible, <laughs> at least for me. The phone's going off. I think that might be the thingy. Um. Yes. They will be here in about 25 minutes. My name's Celia. Not you, at least, so far. See, like, I've been, like, he, th this is, like, the... Like, there is some therapy that's permitted to me for free, but it's kind of funny because whenever I talk to people who actively take, who go to therapists who say good things about it, they're like, well, yeah, the free ones weren't very good. So then I started paying lots of money and now it's great. And it's like, well, I can't afford the lots of money. So I guess I'll never get to the point where I find out if it's good or not. You heard that irrigated crops are dying from the intense heat? Lovely. Have they thought about taxing the oil companies more yet? Right, I'm curious about what percentage of these dwarves still need beds. Uh, like one page, not at the bottom. All right, this should be enough beds for the whole fort then. Yeah, this will be enough. All the green ones in that list still need beds. Before the storms come? What kind of storms are you getting hit by? I guess that's the one nice thing about summer up here is we don't ever get hit by big storms. You sold a surplus bike saddle today to some crazy backpacker lady on her way through. Oh, really? Some crazy backpacker lady. As somebody who goes backpacking, why are backpackers always referred to as crazy? <laughs> like, I, I, I kind of, like, the, to a degree, I get it. But, like, whenever I see people referring to people who backpack, it's like, crazy backpacker. And, like, I've been referred to as crazy before when I've been in public transit with backpacks. It's like, crazy backpackers on the train taking up all this space. It's like, lady, I'm standing here. My backpack's in front of me. Like, I'm not in the way of anybody. <laughs> You're the one flailing. Please stop yelling at me. It's 
Describe the awesome source of the storms when you get back. Okay. But yeah, I'm, I'm not discounting that therapy has its uses. I'm sure it does, but I've never gotten to the point where I've found it to be useful and every therapist I've ever had, I've hated. So <laughs> I don't mind my psychiatrist though, but like I said, not therapy. All right, let's do all that. Then I guess we'll add another layer to these bedrooms once we finish with, um, we'll add another layer to these bedrooms once we um, uh, get, get more migrants and go get a little closer to 200 dwarves. Yeah, now I'm kind of wondering if we're going to get any DF-related announcement, announcements at Gamescom. Just the way that Kit Fox has been tweeting about it. Because Kit Fox is going to Gamescom. They're bringing Dwarf Fortress and Boyfriend Dungeon. I still think that they should, like, promote heavily that Dwarf Fortress will be playable at Gamescom. And then just bring uh, 47.05 current free version on a bunch of computers and be like, see, it's Dwarf Fortress, it's playable. <laughs> and I realized that that would be a very stupid thing to do. But man, I wish that they would do that because that would be like an S-tier trolling move. And I would respect the hell out of it if they did that. <laughs> it would be so mean though. <laughs> but man, this is, this is why I don't work in like video game PR because <laughs> I would be tempted to do that. Nick and Moldog is fighting with a Forgotten Beast, which we should probably go kill pretty soon, that Forgotten Beast. Where is that Forgotten Beast? It's uh, Gassir. It's a towering one-eyed salamander with wings and a bloated body. It's light blue skin is warty beware, it's deadly spittle. Anyway, it's covered in scars. It, it's literally a flying salamander. Which, flying salamander to me, either... It's one of two things. It's either... Well, actually, it's one of three things. A flying salamander is either a military vehicle, like some sort of, like, all-terrain vehicle. Something that runs on Linux. Some sort of, like, back-end open-source software that runs on Linux. Or it only works for on Linux. And uh, the third thing that it could possibly be... Um, Actually, no, it's, it's one of those two things. <laughs> Flying Salamander. It's either, like, piece of software for Linux or it's some sort of military vehicle. And that saddle listed it for six weeks, and uh, you, you don't mind Packers. The crazy part was the occasion. Mailed to you first yesterday and was asking if available. Nothing else. Message again, 2 p.m. I'm passing through at 3.30 p.m. Can I come pick it up? Oh, like, like so they're they're literally just like a vagabond, like, on a trip. Well, I mean, that's kind of rad, though. I don't know. Just because they're short on time. That is cool, though. Also, spring has arrived, so any dwarves that are old have a chance to die. Same with livestock and humans. and Not the elves, though, because they're immortal. And during the pandemic, I sold off a bunch of um, gaming hardware. I sold a couple controllers that I don't use anymore, um, or that I didn't use. Old Xbox controllers and an old GameCube controller that I found that I had. That was for the Wii U. I sold... Uh, steering wheel and like pedals and a joystick and I sold a flight stick and a throttle when I sold the steering wheel when I, I, I nothing died of old age by the way when I sold the steering wheel the guy I sold it to didn't look particularly techy he looked sort of like the kind of guy that would show up and fix your sink 
He kind of had that kind of look about him. Um, sold it to him, gave him all the parts, set it up for him. It worked. Showed him it working, and he's like, and he goes, "Okay." And I said, "So when when you get home, you got to go to Logitech's website because like it's an older unit. You got to search for this firmware." Told him the firmware, what he needed to search for. I'm like, "You got to install the firmware, plug in all the things, and then you'll get your force feedback, and everything should work." Goes, okay, seemed to be no problem. And then I'm like, "But if you run into any issues, just text me, and I'll." We'll, we'll sort it out. I sold it to him for like 200 bucks. And he took all the pieces and he left. I get a text from him the next morning saying, it's not working. I respond with, you sure? And he's like, yeah, it's not working. I'm like, well, I mean, you saw it plugged into my computer. He goes, ah, yeah, something with this driver. Blah, blah, blah. It's, it's not working. Like, it's supposed, you said it would work. It's just, and basically called me out on it. It was, was just like, yo, like, you sold me a broken piece of kit. And I'm just like, listen, dude. I literally set this thing up right in front of you and showed you it working. You clearly installed something incorrectly. Doesn't text me back. And then about six hours later, he's like, I called my nerd friend and he fixed it. Thanks. <laughs> it's just like, wow. It's like, I, I love how this guy just has his nerd friend. He's like, anyway, I get to play truck simulator now. So thanks. So somewhere online, there's probably some dude playing truck simulator that I sold a wheel to. who <laughs> Couldn't figure out how to install a driver. Um, a vile force of darkness has arrived. It uh, appears to be goblins. And on their helms, they have the little arrows indicating an engraving or image. Uh, and uh, it's an image of a jute plant. The image is a symbol of the occult seduction. A goblin civilization. And I'm going to lock them in the burrow. Um, add all of this to the burrow. At least the bedrooms, right? Add all this to the burrow. All right. We're now locked into the burrow. And I'm going to pull this lever. So, let's see how big of a siege this turns out to be. Well, there's beak dogs immediately going after wombats. Chat, can I get a round of beers for all of these goblin invaders riding on beak dogs? It's been a little while since I've seen goblins riding on beak dogs. They got archers, they got... Normal, just, just gobbin boys. Look at these gobbies. Ooh, another wave of them. You know what I haven't seen in a really long time? Goblins fighting alongside of ogres. I had a handful of worlds ages ago that all had ogres. It's been so long. Okay, so they got a couple goblins out front that are fighting with the wombats, but the majority of them are in that death ball. Currently... Okay, <laughs> that's a, I mean, actually, it's not that bad, because it's mostly beak dogs, but. All right, chat room, we're going to fight these guys out in the open, or rather, we're going to fight them in our hallway. Do you think we got this? We've got copper armor. All of my squads are decked out in copper armor, and they have uh, adamantine weapons. It's a lot of G's, yeah. No, they're actually just mad that we uh, featured on Dr. Dre's new album. It's the real reason these uh, G's would be mad. Come on. We said that Beats by Dr. Bra Dre are overpriced, and uh, they're they're not <laughs> they're not thrilled by this. All right, so this goblin's up front. You know, people complain about the frame rate slowdown when there's sieges happening. It's literally bullet time, okay? Oh my god, look at all the trolls. Wow. That's like a, just a full-on goblin siege. So, for anybody who doesn't know, we are right here on this good mountain. This is who's attacking us. These guys, right here. This giant haunted glacier. Um, So... That's who's attacking us. Okay. 
Anyway, here come the soldiers. So just jumping up to the front of my army. Also, if anybody wants a dwarf in this army, let me know. Although uh, we have about 10 minutes, I think, until uh, the appraiser is going to be here. At which point I will take a break. Chat just reloaded. Your internet is haunted today. I'm pretty sure that glacier is haunted, not your internet, but... All right. The dwarves work their way around the corner. So here comes the first and bravest of the goblins. Very slowly. Sneaking. Stealthily. Carefully. That is quite the glob. Good lord. <laughs> that is, in fact, quite the glob of bads. Send you out to die? <laughs> what, you want me to name one Hexwrench? Because I don't think you have a dwarf named Hexwrench. There you go. You can have a dwarf. We'll read your description after. I love how they just have this one goblin out front who's just like the scout. It's just like, all right. Guys, I got this. <laughs> we need to get rid of a co guys. The frame rate's getting bad back at the fortress, uh, so we got to send some of these trolls and uh, beak dogs out of here so that the frames go back up. That's actually all they want to do. Is they they they're just trying to get holy fuck. That's a lot of trolls. It's gonna take a while to clean up all these bodies, isn't it? <laughs> it's gonna take a minute. Holadi. Oh, Lottie. All right. Hmm. It's going to take a minute. So also, chat, um, the literal second I have to get up to go meet this appraiser at the door and let them in and let them look at the unit. The moment I have to do that, I'm going to be pausing everything, saving the game, and then I'll come back and we'll just resume when I get back. Because I don't know how long it's going to take. So hopefully quick. Come on, you gubbin. You're gonna go get food. What are you doing? Oh, you're gonna go take a nap. Of course you are. And before Hex Wrench is one of the ones taking a nap. No. Okay, good. <laughs> so apparently there's six this might be the biggest siege I've ever seen. <laughs> it's that's like six hundred dudes. Six hundred and fifty? Admittedly, like, the majority of that is livestock, but, like, and trolls. But seriously, holy shit. All right, so Goblin steps on the first trap and um, flies into pieces. Um, the serrated copper disc strikes the Goblin crossbowman in the neck, and the severed part sails off in an arc. It just decapitated their neck and they are now gone there's no longer a goblin here um the goblin is gone their neck sailed off in an arc i'd like to reiterate that their neck sailed off in an arc i will be kind of surprised if we win this actually Pleasantly, but still kinda. 
We're going to hit them when they hit that corner there. After as many of them as possible, walk through the traps. For those about to rock, we will stab you. Oh, boy. This is going to be an epic battle. This is going to be like 300, but dwarves. I mean, it's like it's like 30 versus 600. Because I have about 30 dwarves in my military. And there's 600 things there attacking us. We gone blin? I, I don't know about that. Alright, big dog. About about to go splat. Frame rate's gonna speed up so much once they're all dead though. I gotta say that. I'm looking forward to that. Splat. Oh, no, nope, not quite yet. Okay, there you go. <laughs> flies to the sides, flies to the bottom, stabbed again, and gone. Goblin falls off, goblin gets stabbed. Um so 669 is the number of things on the thing. Trolls, 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 trolls. So four, one, two, three, four, five, five and a half pages of trolls. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, let's say seven pages of beak dogs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Basically six pages of trolls, beak dogs, and goblins. Invest W. <laughs> Was that intentional? Take this L. All right, dwarves. Now is your opportunity to prove yourselves. Don't fail us. We're starting to get thirsty. <laughs> Double or nothing? Good luck, dude. I love how some of them are starting to panic because they've seen all the dead in front of them. It's a good sign for us. The dwarves are moving up slowly. I'm thinking we... What we do here is we wait for about half of them to be across... And then we pull that lever there and slam that gate shut so that not all of the trolls can come in and then they can just leave. We don't need to worry about killing all of them. That's my strat here. So I'm going to wait for the majority of the that clump to be across. And then I'll pull that lever. That's my plan. So wish us luck. Look at them all panicking. They're so cute. You poor goblins. Look at them getting splattered. On the dwarven traps. Hail the dwarven engineering, as I say. Oh my god. I'm just so happy this isn't long death. <laughs> like, I would be much more nervous if this was long death. But because this is Plank of Nations, I'm like, nah, we're fine. This will be fine. This will all be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Aside from all of us dying, you know? Just what in the world could possibly go wrong? You know, let's fuck with them a little bit. Let's pull this lever. Because there's... Actually, you know what? No, that's a bad idea. There's a chance I throw a bunch of them into my fort. <laughs> but, you know... Eh. Well, F's for all of your invests. Can't win them all, Farana. Uh, 
Also, the fighting begins because the goblins have started in the the trolls have started encountering my dwarves. You know what? Fuck it. Let the carnage begin. Shall we? Let's find a dwarf who's named and follow them. Let's follow Magna. And it begins. My swords dwarves have entered martial trances. Surprised we haven't seen a hall, uh, a volley of arrows just yet. All right, dwarves. You are poor again. Was that your intent? So they can just cream through all of these injured guys at the front. I can't even, like, pause the game. There we go. Yeah, the Swords Masters seem to be doing a great job, especially with these adamantine short swords. Just slashing them to pieces. And if this is the size... Like, this is the first actual siege we've gotten. We got one tiny siege... But this is the first full siege we've had. So if this is the size of their first full siege, oh boy, <laughs> we're, we are in for a journey in this fortress. This is going to be a good series, I think. And there's backup coming around the corner very slowly. My God. Frames, who needs those? It's just dramatic slowdown. All of the beak dogs are panicking, meaning the the goblins can't move. They should really give their beak dogs some therapists, I think. Because, like, look at their beak dogs. They're all just, like, in a state of frozen panic at the death in front of them. The trolls don't really care. But, like, they're just like, my owners is dead? My friends is dead? This isn't good. Okay, as long as I don't start seeing dwarves get tired or fall over, we should be okay. They're now in full-on combat. There will be a point where we break through and the frame rate just quadruples. So hopefully that's sooner rather than later. It's probably around the time the siege itself breaks. It's Today is a good day to slaughter baddies in a good biome, yes. I can't even really tell what's going on. I mean, it sort of can. I mean, there's a troll, there's troll, there's a thirsty dwarf who's up at the front. Ooh, hey, the frames are picking up. That's good. I think we're breaking through. Magna's in a martial trance, which basically means, martial trance just means they can fight without losing energy because like the only thing really stopping dwarves from just murdering everything is like their own like exhaustion. So if they get exhausted, that's when they die usually when they're a high tier soldier like this. So because they're going into martial trances, it means that, that that bar resets, essentially. There's arrows flying through across the other side. All the dwarves are dodging them. They're probably practically blotting out the sun at this point. A classic line. Wooey. I really should have pulled that lever and just seeing how far we launch them. They're, they're, I just saw a beak dog on top with a goblin on it just jump over the front line to the front line. Or jump over, like, a few lines of goblins to the goblin front line. Oh, shit. Um, I have to go up front. I will be back. Sorry for the cliffhanger. <laughs> 